Mech Warrior 4. God damn, I am so glad I somehow got this game because I loved the fuck out of it. I had no experience with Battletech at all before this game, but when that installer first fired up and that music kicked in, Wednesday, goddamn, 7. It's so ingrained into my psyche that it plays in my head whenever I think of the setting. It's so bombastic, yet warlike, capturing both the dramatic space opera setting and the feeling of stomping around in a 100 ton walking tank to fight for whatever you believe in. A perfect prelude for the game to come. But before we dive into the game, let's talk a little bit about the series and the setting as a whole. In the near future, humanity develops faster than light travel and begins to rapidly colonize the galaxy. However, this age of rapid expansion soon leads to the far-flung colonies becoming detached from their homeworld. Before long, they seek independence. From this, the great houses are formed. Then some war crimes happen, some more crimes happen, nukes get banned, someone invents giant mech suits in protest, a pair of bald dudes fight over terror, the entire Space Navy pieces out, nukes get silently unbanned, and the entire galaxy falls into literal centuries of war on an unimaginable scale. Fast forward a bit, and now we've got murder furries descended from the runaway navy, a phone company crossed religious sect that owns the space internet, and a bunch of feudalistic stellar empires that really, really hate each other. That was, admittedly, an incredibly rough outline of an incredibly complex setting, and I can already hear you turbo nerds hammering away at your keyboards to correct me. Is this you? But if you want a more deeper and more informed look at this setting, you can go check out Tex over at the Black Pants Legion. Or you can go read the wiki at Sana. And if you want to know how tabletop games flow, go check out Battlebound. All of the above, good content. Premium stuff. Now, let's get back to the show. Uh. The plot of Vengeance is told to us via a handful of FMV cutscenes. Oh god, and look how crunchy they are. Something like 200 by 300 resolution. I know it was gaming's puberty years, but ugh. You take on the role of a young noble, Ian Drasari, from a lesser house that rules over a tiny backwater system called Kantaris, because this is the kind of setting where a single family ruling over an entire star system is considered lesser. You had been trained in mech piloting as little more than a sign of class. Like the medieval knights of yore, you never expected your training to be ever needed. That changed when your father had you sent off to die in the clan wars for being an embarrassment to the family. Upon your bitter return, you learn that your father has since been assassinated in a violent coup, led by forces loyal to the Lyran Commonwealth, with only your distant uncle Peter and a few scant surviving loyalists left. You begin a guerrilla war to reclaim your world. The campaign is broken up into several operations, each made of several missions. This is pretty linear, save for one choice we'll make later on that influences the ending. From this campaign menu, we can also access the Mech Lab, where we create ungodly abominations using any mechs and parts we've recovered from the battlefield. The most important of these parts are weapon systems, and they come in three flavors. Energy weapons like lasers go pew pew! The downside is they generate a lot of heat. Ballistic weapons cover everything from classical machine guns to high-tech rail guns. The main course of the ballistic range are the auto cannons, which come in a wide variety to suit your taste. Finally, missile weapons are for when you want to do this. Our first few missions have us setting up for the invasion of Kantaris. To do this, we must first take out a Steiner communication relay on the moon! Mostly static defenses and a few light tanks. No match for our clan tech shadow cats. Oh, stepped in some Steiner. Ugh. Following this, we take out some scud launchers. This is around the first time we get to see some mech on mech action. We even salvage one of the mechs they were piloting. But it's a light mech and we're already in a medium one, so we'll just strip it for parts. Next up, we take out some dropships the Steiners have based on the moon. These things cost just over 214 million sea bills apiece when factory new, and that was before the Succession Wars 2 nuclear boogaloo deleted said factories. Well, if we go by their factory value, 
according to Sana, one Seabill equals $4.78. So, translating that out of wizard fun bucks and into real world money, that's... Three billion seventy eight million nine hundred and ninety nine thousand nine hundred and seven dollary dues and twenty cents. Eat shit, Steiner. Before we start our last mission in the area, we get given some intercepted communications between these two chuckle fucks Roland, the Steiner appointed planetary governor, and Castro, Roland's military advisor. Why have we heard nothing from the moon base? It's probably nothing. Probably just the wind. I'm gonna take some people up there to have a look anyway. Oh shit, now we have to defend our dropship. I actually screw up one of the primary objectives here. I failed to defend all of the mobile power units helping kickstart the dropship. But for some reason, the mission doesn't fail. This is just one example of how dynamic this game can be with its objectives. Failing primary ones often doesn't result in an automatic game over but rather instead having to come up with an alternative plan on the fly, usually against much harder odds. In this case, the dropship can't power up its own weapons, meaning we're alone fighting off the remaining attackers. Down to the planet proper. We've set up in the Arctic region. It's worth mentioning here that the game's use of environments is deliberate. Depending on the environment, certain conditions like heat generation, ballistics, and jump height are affected. In this case, the low temperature of the polar region means that we'll drain excess heat faster. It's a nice way of guiding in new players who wouldn't yet fully understand the heat mechanic by giving them a little bit more leeway with it. This area is also the first place where we get to control our squad mates directly, allowing us to select who we bring and what they'll be piloting. So, I guess now is as good a time as ever to talk about your squad mates. Despite all of them being one-dimensional characters, and despite the AI being incredibly useless, I sort of love these guys. Since we're going to be fighting together, there's something that I have to tell you. I can juggle. Which is why Black Knight hurts me the way it does. Oh my sweet clown boy, no! <laughs> Our missions here are rather standard fare. A quick recon mission discovers a Lyran force who are also reconning the area. Helicopter, helicopter! Destroyed. Next, we raid some depots for supplies. So, now I have to talk about the salvage mechanics. Objects in the world have associated salvage that, if left intact, will be added to our inventory at the end of the mission. Additionally, enemy mechs have a chance of being salvaged if we disable their legs. The enemy cannot walk if you disable his legs. Destroying areas may disable the weapons mounted there, but will prevent us from salvaging those weapons later on. The third mission of this area has us mobilizing to rescue Gonzales and some technicians who are pinned down by enemy mechs. It gets pretty hairy for me because I decided to take the Rocket Shotgun 9000 and promptly got reminded what ammo shortages feel like and how bad small lasers are. Hurry the fuck up and explode! Before the final mission of this area, we received word that our uncle was separated from Gonzales during that previous operation. And now this asshole, Duncan Burke, is boasting on public TV about how he killed him. So, I killed your uncle. Laugh out loud. Rather than rush off to unalive this shit heel, Gonzalez instead persuades us to finish the mission Peter died attempting. So off we go to steal some satellites. The mission is a pretty standard take and hold. But if you blow up the turret control station here, your techs will eventually repair and reprogram the remaining turrets to aid in your defense. There are also a couple of automatic repair bays that somehow magically have the exact parts required to repair your mech. As much as these break the law, believe me, you'll be glad they're in the game. Using our now stolen satellites, our team discover a crashed Steiner dropship. All the missions in this area are centered around eventually reaching and destroying this ship. I thought we blew up like three of these earlier no problem, why are we panicking about a crashed one? The mission to destroy the dropship itself is a pain in the ass, since we only have a limited time to take it on before it will lift off, but we still have to deal with its defenses. A whole squad of tanks and a full lance of mechs. 
I tried to beat this mission by wailing on it with LRMs and artillery beacons, but I just couldn't do enough damage in time, and it just kept taking off. Oh no, we've got a lift off. Fuck. Oh, fuck. No, fuck. Fuck it. Rush B. Alright. That's why they never go up. Target on our way to rendezvous with the Resistance, our band of misfits raid a military firebase for some much needed supplies. So we get to cover some cargo trucks whilst they score us some sick five finger discounts. Gaze upon my Burt Mauler! Uh, uh. The fuck am I gonna do with all these fucking guns? We then manage to get in contact with the Resistance leader, Ian's surviving sister, Joanna. Sis, did anyone else survive? Uh... <laughs> No. The resistance base then comes under attack, and we're called upon to defend it. We prevent some missile turrets from being destroyed so they can deal with incoming aircraft, and then we waddle our way over to the base. Target destroyed. Skip it up and down. They've hit one of the mech hangers. Fuck. This mission somehow scores us a goddamn mad cat. Arguably the poster child of the Battletech setting. And I know just what to do with it. Jerry Garrett destroyed. Target 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 destroyed. I just wish the enemy would stop exploding next to the barges. God damn it, you will die where I tell you to die. Uh uh. Wait, why is this farm labelled as an enemy target? Your discretion, Omega. Just ensure no witnesses. In the region's final mission, we raid a prison camp to rescue some POWs. During the fight, Kulin arrives. He's, uh, someone? Gordon Roland will be grateful to be rid of you. He'll be pleased when I tell him of your demise. Headshot. New region, new biome. Welcome to the Swamplands. Listen up, you rebellious fuckers. I'm gonna bomb the shit out of this random city. Then I'll show you how evil the rebels are. Well, I guess our first job in this region is to destroy those bombers. Pew pew, motherfucker! Oh, that salvage. How the fuck do they know about the bomber? Sire, you did kind of announce their existence on public television. Fuck! Now what do we do? I want that city exploded! Well, we do have a battleship. That's somewhat akin to a bomber, right? Great idea! I'm so glad I came up with it. As for you, uh, I'm devoting you to scrub Third class. Sire, that meme is ancient. Fuck off. Hmm. That sure doesn't bode well. Well, I'm sure this mission involving fighting lightly armed convoys by ourselves isn't gonna go wrong. Leaving so soon? The fun's just starting. Uh, who are you? You don't recognize my voice. I'm hurt. No, really, who the fuck are you? I've come to liberate you of your head. So be a deer and die now. Impossible! Seriously, who the fuck was that? Despite Burke being dead and the bombers destroyed, Roland still starts an attack on the city. As his battleships draw nearer to begin their bombardment, we rush in to protect an evacuation. With the two attacking battleships now sunk to the bottom of the river, we walk alongside the evacuation ship as they leave the ruined city behind. Roland will pay for this. The fighting has moved into the capital city now, and we get to experience these fantastic city battlefields. MechWarrior 5 didn't have proper urban combat until a DLC release, and even then, it rarely felt as expansive as this. Although, I suppose that's more because the buildings here are just glorified cubes. Not that hard to render. Without plentiful water pools to cool down in, this area gets a bit rough on the old Mad Cat. The enemy is now consistently throwing assault class mechs at us, including an atlas which we managed to steal! Oh yeah, here comes Stompy! After a quick recon of the city, we're tasked with saving some stranded mech pilots. It's a pretty simple mission, but the spawn point of the survivors is randomized each time you launch it, so if you die here, you'll have to search all the locations all over again. Next up, we raid an intelligence base that's stationed in a university. Uh, 
Oh, I don't feel good about this. I'm not sure what to make of this young duke. Maybe you know more than I. The salvage team brought it in. It's clearly a clan Omnimech. Shares some parts and resembles a mad cat. But it's 90 tons. <laughs> We also receive a phone call from our beloved traitor cousin. Hey, cousin. How's life? What the fuck do you want, William? Let's just lay down our arms. We could share the power. I totally won't have you assassinated. I promise. Get then. Joanna then has the great idea of staging a secondary attack whilst we raid a bunker full of high-grade top-tier loot. And she promptly gets fucking stomped on. So now we get the only choice in the campaign! Does Ian rush off to save his sister, or push on to the bunkers as they had planned? Well, I decided to ask Twitter, and you psychos selected leave her. Well, I don't make the rules. I just enforce them. During this mission, one of our pilots bails on us to try and save Joe. Oh yeah, fuck, I didn't even mention the other two pilots we picked up. Mostly because they are bland and forgettable. Who the fuck names their kid Damien Squire? Oh shit, uh, ambush, Lyran forces, bad, not good, kill. Holy shit, this mission is rough. Well, we pop open each of these blast doors and... Are they, are they fucking spawning on us? Towards the end of the level, we encounter Captain Castro and her lance of elite warriors. We're just gonna cheese them out using distance shots. And as Castro falls, we lay claim to the resources that Joe gave her life for. A dashy. Not, no, not, not that one. I know what you were thinking. Fucking degenerate. Also, a shitload of equipment. Holy fuck, that's like a whole regiment worth of spares. And here we are. There's only one operation here. One task, one goal. Take back the throne and restore our rightful rule. But actually, we've got three objectives. Kill the Royal Guard, shut down the palace defenses, and ground Roland's dropship. It's a bitter twist of irony that we are now sieging the throne in the same way it was taken from us. No, surely we can make a deal! Shut up and die! Target destroyed. It's over. Our surviving lance mates filter out, leaving us alone staring at the smoking ruin that was once our home. Until... Cousin! It's been too long, William! In this heated one-on-one -on -one fight, we run away to get some repairs first. Now on even footing, we beat off... Wait, no, I mean, we face off against him in an explosive what? final duel. Damage critical. <laughs> Five minutes later. Guess I'm the Duke now. It's just a shame Joe isn't here to see it. I'm sure she'd have loved all of those political prisoner executions you ordered. Well, I'm sure that'll have no lasting consequences. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's real funny. And that was Mech Warrior for Vengeance. A fun, if sometimes rough, Mech Warrior title with decent acting and solid gameplay. In some ways, I believe it's even better than Mech Warrior 5. If this video has interested you at all, then I highly recommend just picking up a copy from one of the many totally legal sources. That's if you can get it working, of course. Next up, we'll tackle the campaign expansion Black Knight, as well as the standalone Mercenaries. Until then, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I thank you for watching. Hey, and do we even need those, did we even need those, uh, you know, those supplies way back in, you know... I'm pretty sure we had assault mechs at that point, didn't we? I don't think we needed that, actually. No. See, I think you just picked the bad ending because you wanted to see what it looked like, and that's really depressing. Have you ever played Undertale, Ian? I played Undertale. It's an old game. But yeah, I think you, I think you, I think you could stand to play a little bit of Undertale, Ian. Then maybe you wouldn't be such a shit bastard.